It was August 2020. The Fuhrer, Bill Gates, announced that everyone will be vaccinated. The Fuhrer's future. Surviving Bill Gates and the Nazis. Edmund, it's time to run for the hills. With guest star historian Jordan Maxwell. Do you think that we can hide under those rocks? Hold on, I hear, hear motor, motorcycles. Come on, let's go. They released the drones. Edmund, wait for me! Look, it's SpaceX. Wow. Look. Broadcasting live from a secret, undisclosed location. The People's Intelligence Agency. Can't the people be intelligent too? Okay. I want you to have a seat with us at a secret, undisclosed location. And uh, let's talk about uh, 2020. Tracking or... Well... They said they're coming to the door of the 2020 census, and even if you filled it out, they're still coming to the door. The door? Donald Trump says that the military is going to make sure we get the shots. The military is ready to go. They're ready to deliver a vaccine. So, uh, is this far enough away? We're in, a, in an undisclosed location. Secret. Secret. Don't tell them. Somewhere. In Don't the tell them. Don't do it, Jerry. Social distancing? And I think basically, is it far enough? When is enough? How much is enough, Bill Gates? How many trillions of dollars do you expect to make from this vaccine? And how many people will die as a result? We have reached an agreement with Moderna to manufacture and deliver 100 million doses of their coronavirus vaccine, up to 500 million shortly thereafter. So we'll have 600 million doses. 600 million doses. Bill, is there something mentally wrong with you? Some people are saying you're not even human, Bill. Are you a walk-in? Are you from another planet? Are you part of the fake alien invasion? I have built more than just a new kind of soldier. Have created the devil himself. Jerry, it's a drone, it's shooting at us. Get to the cave, turn. Turn, go in the cave. Hurry, there's the entrance. Turn right. Okay, okay, we got it. Run, Jerry! Meet me at the Market Cafe! Jordan Maxwell? Yes, I am. Bill, good to meet you. Were you in a time travel tunnel or something? Oh, I've been feeling like it lately. Uh, yeah? I discovered a lot of things when I was in California for 60 years. I had a lot of very important friends. Very interesting things happened to me. Uh, as I was a, when I was a small child, my mother had an uncle that worked in the Vatican, Secretary of State's office, as a civilian. And on occasions when he would come home to visit the family, uh, he would sit for hours and talk about the international intrigue. The quatrains predicting the assassination of John F. and Robert Kennedy are the most impressive. Listen carefully to these words struck at night. 
What other way would a 16th century man have to describe the striking force of a modern high-powered rifle? Robert Kennedy indeed was struck at night. And in Century 6, Quartrain 37, Nostradamus asserts that Lee Harvey Oswald was not the assassin of JFK. Going on behind the scenes of world government and religion, and, and it was fascinating to me, and I grew up with this. I have a senator and a congressman in my family from long ago. I have federal judges in my family, so I grew up in, in the atmosphere of politics, behind the scenes, listening to uh, very wise men in politics and religion talking about conspiracies and international injury. And so I was very interested in this subject in my teens. And then, of course, when I first heard uh, your albums that you produced on the Illuminati, all the pieces began to fit together better for me because I understood there was world conspiracy. Something that the old man said many years ago, he said that conspiracies are able to deal with just about anything. They can buy you off, they can shoot you, they can deal with you in just about any way they want. Well, they, the own one, the, they own the money system. Right, but the one thing he said they cannot deal with is exposure. So today I just kind of quietly watch the world I'm living in, giving up, watching the people give up and wear their masks and stay six foot apart from each other and don't talk and don't think. Go home, keep your mask on, and, and we hope you die. And that's what is going on. I'm watching the slow and destruction, and complete destruction of not only the American culture, but of our whole system of life. That's why I kind of tend to like it out here, among the trees and the quiet and the peaceful, because I realize what we're losing. I know what we're losing. We're losing our culture. We're losing our country. We're losing everything. And the reason why is because we are useful, what is called, if you look it up in a dictionary, useful idiots. V.I. Lenin, when he was helping to found the Soviet Union, many years ago, back in the 1920s, when he was setting up the Soviet Union. He had a very, very strong personality. He's one of those people who never appears to doubt himself. He called the Russian people useful idiots because they needed, the Communist Party needed all the people to agree to live under world communism. Well, nobody agreed, they just did it told to do it. Like we are doing, we don't have to wear masks, we're just told to do it. Well, unhappily, we Americans have been trained that when we're told to do something, we just do it. Well, we're getting a lot of social credits, you know? Well, 99% of the people are making that so. Because when 99% of the people wear masks, then you have to wear a mask. Everybody knows you have to wear a mask. What for? We don't know. We just have to wear a mask. Why? Because we were told to wear a mask. And I'm just amazed at my late age. I'm amazed to look back on the country I was born in and see to what extent, and really appreciate to what extent we have given up our freedom, our liberties, and our country. We've given up everything here. And I saw in the Rockefeller document, which was about exactly 100 years ago, 1918, that the exact same thing happened. The mask and, and the, the virus and, the, and the supposedly, you know, uh, 50 billion, 50 million people died, supposedly. And I find that fascinating that the same exact things happening now. So it seems like there's a Well, purge. I discovered when I was in Los Angeles, that something a lot of people don't know, that organized crime, what you would call the mafia, mm -hmm. have their own license tag in California. Los Angeles is crammed filled with organized criminals. They have their own license tags mm -hmm. that the state of California gives them. It's like the, the California mafia. Uh, That's what it is. But Pelosi, Getty, 
brown. Yeah. Wow. I wonder if there's any mafia connections to Getty and Brown and Pelosi. Newsom, California Mafia. Here we go. Let's take a look at this. Pat Brown's father, Edmund Joseph Brown, was known for running scams and gambling operations in San Francisco. With the help of businessman William Newsom II, Pat Brown became governor of California for two terms. During his governorship, he awarded the Squaw Valley concession contract to William Newsom III. I love and his partner, Squaw Valley. John Pelosi. Mm. The deal was criticized for the state of California paying for everything and getting nothing. William Newsom III grew up with the governor's son Jerry, who was training to be a judge. Jerry, priest. that sounds familiar. What else John is Pelosi's new? Son Paul. Married Nancy D'Alessandro, oh, daughter of Thomas D'Alessandro Jr., who was known for smuggling heroin into the U.S. with Lucky Luciano and the Baltimore Mafia. John Pelosi's son Ron married William Newsom's daughter Barbara. I remember a long time ago being told by people in organized crime. Jerry Brown, the Jesuit trained operative for organized crime in California, that's what I was told, by people who should know. And so they told me, they said, Jerry Brown, his father was Pat Brown. They said, Pat Brown was in our pocket. We own the old boy, the old Pat Brown. Mm -hmm. We own his son. Well, after 60 years of living in Los Angeles, I found out there's not much the Mafia doesn't own in California. They own the food distribution, transportation, motion pictures, entertainment, period. Everything. Anything and everything that people are involved in, you better look for the organized crimes money. Wow, it's an incredible story that I wish I could tell them. But there's nothing else I can do about it. It's just me by myself. And because of my experiences of where I've been and what I've heard from other people and seen with my own eyes, mm -hmm. it's an incredible story. Like the biggest story in town because it's the only story in town. Yeah, it's the only one. The biggest story in town is your town is not your town. It just happens by chance to be where you happen to live. It's not your town, it's owned by somebody else. And remember, according to European law, whoever owns the land owns everything on the land. Like the chattel on it. That's right. That's why we have a chattel that's, mortgage document called the birth certificate. That's exactly right. And so therefore, if you own a particular property, if there are other people who are living there, you own not only the property, but the people on the property. And if you're a dog and, and other animals, you own those animals on the property, because you own the property. And they're on your property, so you own them. That's the way it worked in Europe. That's the way it works here. And so we are nothing more than owned by someone. You gotta figure out who it is that owns us. Now, remember cowboy movies, the old John Wayne movies? Right. The cowboys are right. Hey, the pilgrims. Cowboys. Yeah. Hey, a bunch of pilgrims. <laughs> That's right. But pilgrim, you caused a lot of trouble this morning. Might have got somebody killed. And somebody ought to belt you in the mouth. But I won't. I won't. The hell I will. That's a guy that's kind of going across the land, a pilgrim, right? A pilgrim is a Masonic term that's used in Freemasonry. Mm. It's a secret tip-off. When somebody's called a pilgrim, that huh. means you know who we are and you know who we are. And therefore you're working for us. Mm. It's a secret tip-off. When somebody's called a pilgrim, that huh. means you know who we are and you know who we are. And 
therefore you're working for us. You're referred to as a pilgrim. It's an extraordinary story. It's kind of like the, uh, the Santa, the Maria, and the pilgrims with the Knights of Malta cross on the boats. Right, Knights of Malta yeah. cross. And a hundred. As a matter of fact, did you know that the CIA is a Knights of Malta organization? The Central Intelligence Agency of America is not American. It's not a U.S. government agency. It's a privately owned company of which the U.S. is a major contributor to that company. So therefore, our U.S. government, uses, because the law says whoever the government finances and controls, so that's why we today look at the CIA as a, as a uh, United States agent. Why do you control the CIA and the FBI? Because you're the biggest contributor to the CIA. We bought shares a long time ago. You didn't know anything about it. You're not supposed to know that it was a privately owned company huh. by the Knights of Malta, the Maltese organization. And the United States government was its largest shareholder. And so they bought shares in the CIA, and today they have so many shares, they run it. Effectively a multinational corporation. It's called the Knights of Malta Cross. And it's in honor of the Knights of Malta who own Nabisco. The people only knew half of it. It would frighten me. Edmund, to death. where are you going? Why did you leave me? You you had those drones following you, Edmund, man. Edmund, you left me. You're talking to Jordan Maxwell? Jordan, yes. it might be the end. What what should we do? I think quite realistically, because of the mess that we're in, we should learn to pray and to talk to the Great Spirit, what we call God, because if there is a God, you better call on him now. You better talk to him now. Right now, right? Right now. Well, that concludes Episode 9, where Edmund and Sherry follow Jordan's advice. In Episode 10, they make it to the Love Ranch, and what happens there is truly an answer to their prayers. Go to Episode 10 now.